Welcome back to Politics Tonight. Uh, the Court of Appeal has granted President-elect Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu uh, permission to inspect election materials used for the just-concluded presidential election, delivering a ruling on an ex-party motion filed by the President-elect. A three-member panel of the tribunal, led by Justice Joseph Inkeji, held that there is substance in the application and the applicant is entitled to have access to all the materials used in the presidential election. The court, however, refused the request of the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, seeking to stop INEC from reconfiguring the bimodal voter accreditation system. The court held that granting the request would jeopardize INEC's process in the conduct of the March 11 election. The court agreed with INEC that the information contained in the Beavers will be stored in its back end server, a submission to which the Labour Party did not object. Members elect of the House of Representatives have received clear certificates of return from the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. According to INEC, winners have been declared for 423 national legislative seats, while supplementary elections will be held in 46 constituencies. At the House of Representatives, 325 out of 360 seats have been won by eight political parties. The governing All Progressives Congress, APC, won 162 seats. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, clinched 102 seats. Labour Party has 34 seats. And the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, has 18 seats. Other parties with members elect at the House of Representatives include the Social Democratic Party, SDP, and the African Democratic Congress, ADC. The All Progressives Grand Alliance, APCA, and the Young Progressives Party, YPP. Let's bring you more stories. An All Progressives Congress Supports Group for the Tinubu Shatima Presidency Youth Alliance for Tinubu is insisting that the presidential election conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission is credible and transparent. They urged opposition political parties challenging the outcome to withdraw uh, their lawsuits. They also warned presidential candidates of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, and the PDP presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar against sponsoring street protests and civil unrest, which they say is capable of truncating Nigeria's democracy. The national coordinator of the Youth Alliance for Tinubu, Belo Shagari, describes claims by the Labour Party and the PDP that the election result was manipulated as false, and he also called on the international community to stand with Nigeria and not be used to peddle unfounded narratives that will threaten the peace and stability. No political party has mobilized people in the nooks and crannies of Nigeria like the All Progressive Congress APC. And no candidate among those who run for the pres president has invested himself in the politics of Nigeria like Bola Ahmed Tinubu. I therefore wish to call on various stakeholders in the democratic struggle, including democratic governments around the world, to come in the defense of Nigeria's democracy. In Lagos, the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, is calling on Kwara indigenous residents in the state to vote for the Lagos State's Governor, Babajide Sowolu, in the forthcoming governorship election in the state. Mr. Mohammed, in a meeting, tasks residents to leverage on the good work done by the governor and cast their votes for his second-term bid. The minister was accompanied by the deputy governor of Lagos, who also asked Quarrens in the states to vote for the APC for a better Lagos for all. We have assembled today this number of people who are with voters and with babies, who are just a minute percentage of our people in Lagos. We will spare nothing to ensure victory for Governor Bajide Sanwonu is the election game on Saturday. We, the people of Kwara State, are going to find everywhere in Lagos State. So we have a governor in Bajide Sanwonu, we have a deputy governor in Dr. Kadri Obafemi Amzat, 
who understands the geography of the states, who understands the necessities of these states. So there is no need to experiment with people who have never controlled anything in their lives. Lagos is too important. And we are therefore telling our brothers and sisters gathered here today who have come together to endorse us, to say we are appealing to Lagosians for continuity and for them to vote for APC on Saturday. All right, still in Lagos, the Indigo in Lagos have endorsed the Governor Babaji de Sanwolu uh, for a re-election on March 11, governorship election. Igbo residents in Lagos say they will be performing their civic duty by voting for the Governor. Ademola Lawrence reports. Igbos living in Lagos who are made of traditional rulers, market leaders, a promise to vote for the incumbent Governor of the state and other APC candidates contesting in the March 11th election, they said there is a lot at stake given the investment of Igbos in Lagos and that only a thoughtless tribe without minds of their own will toy with their destiny. In Igbo will never toy with their destiny, their interests, their investment and their security in Lagos by going into needless competition with the Yorubas who have been very accommodating. Our support for him is anchored on, the perform on his performance, competence, cordial relationship with Igbos and his grand vision for Lagos, which has greatly favored Igbos. Igbos outside APCs, the workers, the traders, town unions are here to tell our governor that come March 11, we will vote a mass for you as the governor of Lagos State, vote our House of Assembly. Baba Jide Songolu for endorsing him for the second time because he has done well. He has done really well. In fact, we have never had any governor in the past that have taken the Igbos like his own project. He took us as like a pet project. Not only the Igbos in the, in the politics uh, uh, environment, but even in the ones in the market. In a solo Igbo axis, the Igbo says among all contestants for the tasking office of the Lagos State Governor in the coming election, Mr. Songolu is the best, tested and capable. So they urge all Igbos to vote him on Saturday for the continued benefit of the Indigo. I'm appealing to their conscience. The Igbos in Lagos, let's vote for APC, for all the uh, electoral positions this coming Saturday, you know, so that the governor will continue to work and provide conducive atmosphere for us to strive in whatever we do. For the Igbos, this Saturday, they will vote for re-election of Governor Songolu and APC State's Assembly candidates. Adimola Lawrence, TVC News, Lagos. Ahead of Saturday's governorship election in Delta State, the National Executive of the Labour Party has dissociated itself from any endorsement of the All Progressives Congress governorship candidate. Ovia Omar Gege saying members of the group forming the alliance are not members of the party, nor part of the obedience movement. We've come here to debunk such rumors saying that the obedient family are supporting the APC for the next elections coming up on Saturday. Delta State obedient family members, this struggle of a new Nigeria will never die. We don't have such alliances. It's totally false. Any obedience that moves to that direction is automatically not with us. You know our antecedents. You know the way we move. We go, we move as obedience. We, f we follow the due process. We don't uh, go uh, different, in different sections, in different uh, banners. And we, we are a group and we take decisions like he's here today. We decided to come here and give our words to Delta because of what we are seeing in the media. The All Progressives Congress in Oshun State is alleging that the state governor, Ademola Adeleke, of laying claim to projects executed by former governor Adegwe Gawiyotola to mark his 100 days in office, addressing journalists in Oshubu. Chairman of the party, Tajuddin Lawal, says the achievements of the governor is a far cry of what he has received from the federal government since assumption of duty. Rafiu Hamid reports.
On Tuesday, Ademola Deleke marked his 100 days in office as the Ocean State Governor. The Olo project was inaugurated. The governor addressed journalists to highlight some of his achievements in office to include sinking of bore hopes, renovation of roads, revitalization of primary health care centers, launching of digital economy, among others. But the state chairman of the APC at a press conference accused the governor of laying claim to projects executed by former governor Dibu Igoitola before he left office. He also accused the governor of stopping the takeoff of academic activities at the University of Felicia, sacking of 1,500 teachers, 20,000 OES cadets, and over 200 earth workers with nothing to show for it. It will be pedestrian and monochromatic to talk about the Adeleke promised intervention in the primary health projects across the state and sinking of boreholes in each of the 332 wards across the state as a random investigation of the same, like others, has shown that they are only a mirage and delusion which are only existing in the imagination of the sacked governor and his co-travelers. So 6.1 billion Shopee, and uh, they have also gotten um, an allocation of about, FAC allocation of about 20 billion. So from the local government, they have about 30 billion. So what that means is that for state and local government, the Adelaide government had gotten about 90 billion in three months. And the question is, what have they done with the 90 billion? Meanwhile, the Senate spokesperson, Ajibala Bashiru, has raised an alarm over non-appearance of members of the election petitions tribunal in the state 10 days after the election to hear the applications filed. Five several applications since the 3rd of March 2023 before the registry of the uh, tribunal here in Oshun. But uh, strangely, uh, to date, no member of the panel of judges is uh, on ground to hear the application. As we all know, an election petition is time bound and no extension of time can be granted. With about 48 hours to the House of Assembly election in the state, the APC appealed to the electorate to come out en masse and vote for candidates of the party. Rafi Hamid, TVC News, Ushubu. You're still watching Politics Tonight. We'll take a break and I'll be right back. Please stay with us. Of protocol and events. North, APC Presidential Campaign Council congratulates the President elect Bola Ahmed Tinbu and Vice President elect Kashim Shetima. We are confident that your victory marks the dawn of a new Nigeria and we look forward to the tremendous impact your tenure will make in our great country. For a meaningful life, basic amenities and infrastructure must be in place. These are quality education, improved healthcare service delivery, security of lives and property, food security, potable water, affordable housing, and more. This is the covenant Honorable Mohammed Umaru Bago has with the good people of Niger State as the incoming governor. Bago, as a banker of repute and a federal legislator, is determined to turn Niger State to a sustainable economy driven by massive agricultural development and rural urban linkages. Another high point of his program is urban renewal with the state of the art infrastructure development. So let's vote in this great man of many parts, Bago, as the governor of Niger State on Saturday, March 11, 2023. This message is sponsored by Dr. Friends of Bago. Congratulations to the president-elect, Bola Ahmed Tinubu and Vice President-elect Kashim Shetima. Let us join hands to support them on this journey of a renewed hope for Nigeria. Courtesy of al Haji Abubakar Sanusi Gamji, Director of Protocol and Events North, APC Presidential Campaign Council. In the month of March, on the 3rd is World Wildlife Day. On March the 8th, is a day set aside as International Women's Day. March 13th is Commonwealth Day. 
and March 21st is the day dedicated to the elimination of racial discrimination and also World Down Syndrome Day. World Water Day is on the 22nd and March 24th is World Tuberculosis Day. While March 25th is International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery. Finally, on the 28th of March, it's one year remembrance of the Abuja Kaduna train attack. Brace yourself for an interesting march only on TV. -C. There is always more to a story than the screaming line. The part of a story that is not told casts a shadow. It's like the part of an object that is not reached by light. On TVC News, I'm able to explore the many angles there are to a story, talking to stakeholders, asking the difficult questions and digging for facts. I believe the viewers are able to make a better decision if they're well informed and understand not just a part, but the complete story. TVC News, first with Breaking News. It's not your regular show. It's an online interactive session where we share my views on the everyday issues that cut across politics, security, health, current affairs, governance, and so much more. I am passionate about our country. I choose to support any conversation geared towards building a better Nigeria. Abajide Kolaju Chitoju. Join me every Saturday on TVC News YouTube channel. Discuss Nigeria and the world at large on the show, Issues with Jide. Information is power. Information is security. Information is knowledge. On Level Lens, we believe that working people around the world have real questions of their own. They want to know how the world of work operates what it means to the employer of labor, how policies affect workers in the workplace. On Labor Lens, I am sure we engage effectively the organized labor, organized private sector and government to get out of them information workers are in need of. I am Sharon e. Jason, asking questions that make you get sense of the workplace. Breaking news. We covered the big political stories in Nigeria, but people want more than just politics. Business news, sports naturally, but you need news to live by also. Stories about education, health, personal finance, and hey, even lifestyle news. Newspaper reviews, travel news, and much more. Nigeria, it's more than just politics, it's life. Start your day with us every weekday. TVC News Breakfast, first, fast, Balanced and accurate. TVC News first with breaking news. Every week, Green Angle, in partnership with Wild Aid, will bring you a documentary series on environmental issues affecting Nigeria's amazing biodiversity from climate change, air pollution, and wildlife conservation. We will be traveling across Nigeria to give you on the ground report of the issues affecting our environment. It airs every Saturday at 4.30 p.m. only on TVC News. So, all in favor say aye. Those against no, the eyes are weak. What do you know about the legislature, its role in governance, and as one of the three arms of government? Lagos Parliament is here to bring it to you. Here to bring you every detail you need to know about the legislature in Africa's most populous city. All Lagos Parliament to get a chance to meet the lawmaker of the week. Events are critically reviewed. You can also observe plenary in Yoruba language. I am Abimbola Aglebi. Join me every Friday at 9 p.m. as I take you through the activities of the legislature. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. 
Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. It's the most visited state in Africa. As the fifth largest economy on the continent, covering Lagos and its government is no mean feat. It's a busy beat. We go beyond the cutting of tapes to traveling far into the deep. I want to thank the Lagos state government for the healthcare facility. To bring stories that cut across all spectrums. A greater Lagos shall be ours. With well beings. Every major news story is with many perspectives and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time did the news? First, with breaking news. Precious Amayo as a bringing news from the epicenter, where it happens and when it happens. Staying on top of every breaking story, minute by minute, right at the hour when the city gets busy and just before it sleeps. We're live from every angle with objective insight and analysis. TVC News, first with breaking news. In the month of March, on the 3rd is World Wildlife Day. On March the 8th is a day set aside as International Women's Day. March 13th is Commonwealth Day. And March 24th is the day dedicated to the elimination of racial discrimination and also World Down Syndrome Day. World Water Day is on the 22nd. And March 24th is World Tuberculosis Day. While March 25th is International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery. Finally, on the 28th of March, it's one year remembrance of the Abuja Kaduna train attack. Brace yourself for an interesting March, only on TVC. It's the seventh successive general election in Nigeria's 23 years of unbroken democratic rule. With more than 93 million registered voters, this is Africa's largest election, having over 75% of voters between the age of 18 and 49. This elects across 774 local government areas. You need a station like TVC News for minute by minute account. From the presidential and national assembly elections down to the governorship and state houses of assembly poll. We are on ground every step of the way with live coverage across the 36 states and the FCT. It is an election like no other. So stay tuned to TVC News for in-depth coverage, breaking news, exclusive... Voted as the best TV station of the year. TVC News breaks into the core of every event as they happen. Following all nationwide big and impactful stories. Without the news from every perspective. Covering every human angle. I am Veronica, bringing you the news you would want to watch. It's the most visited state in Africa. As the fifth largest economy on the continent, covering Lagos and its government is no mean feat. It's a busy beat. We go beyond the cutting of tapes to traveling far into the deep. I want to thank the Lagos state government for the healthcare facility. To bring stories that cut across all spectrums. A greater Lagos shall be ours. Stories that define our collective well-being as Lagosians. Amadido Jasalam Adini. I live in Lagos, inside Lagos.
It's not your regular show. It's an online interactive session where I will share my views on the everyday issues that cut across politics, security, health, current affairs, governance, and so much more. I am passionate about our country. I choose to support any conversation geared towards building a better Nigeria. I am Abajide Kolaji Tutoju. Join me every Saturday on TVC News YouTube channel as I discuss Nigeria and the world at large on the show, Issues with Jide. Information is power. Information is security. Information is knowledge. On Labor Lens, we believe that working people around the world have real questions of their own. They want to know how the world of work operates, what it means to the employer of labor, how policies affect workers in the workplace. On Labor Lens, I ensure we engage effectively the organized labor, organized private sector, and governments to get out of them information workers are in need of. I am Sharon Jason, asking questions that make you get sense of the workplace. Amayo as I bring you news from the epicenter, where it happens and when it happens, staying on top of every breaking story, minute by minute, right at the hour when the city gets busy and just before it sleeps. We're live from every angle with objective insight and analysis. TVC News, first with breaking news. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. Never miss a moment. Instant breaking news from all over the globe. Live streaming of your favorite programs delivered directly to you. Watch anytime from anywhere on your mobile or smart devices. Download the TVC News app today. Available on Google Play and Apple Store. Welcome back. You're still watching Politics Tonight, digging beyond the headlines. And now to our interview with the guests of the day. I am now joined by the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Obafemi Hamzat. is a former Commissioner for Science and Technology during the administration of Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu as Governor, which he retained in the government of former Governor Babatunde Fashola in 2007. Thank you very much for joining us, Your Excellency. Thank you for having me. All right. Uh, before we get into the business of the day, let me congratulate you on the victory of your party uh, uh, despite losing Lagos. How does it feel retaining power at the federal level despite uh, considering the rigorous and uh, competitive contest we, uh, during the presidential election? Well, I think uh, we are very delighted that the Nigerian people listened to the message of our party and uh, our flag bearer, who is the president-elect now, Ashwag Bola Ahmed Inumbu, and his running mate, Senator Kashim Shetima. And I'm sure that Nigerians will not be disappointed. These are men of capability, of intellect, of integrity, and ability to perform. So I'm confident that Nigerians will be happy with this team. And like I said, we are very, very excited that Nigerians listen to our message. It's a very competitive race. And at the end of the day, Nigerian people decided to pitch their tent with our party. And that's very comforting. That's very good. But we also know that it comes with challenges. 
because we've made a lot of promises. And uh, our team, led by the president-elect, has started working. And uh, by the time they are sworn in, they'll be able to actually swing into action and do very well for this country. So I'm excited. Um, I'm happy that uh, the Nigerian people listen to us and, you know, improve our democratic credentials. These are elections that must be competitive, and uh, it has gone the way it's gone. And uh, we have a winner now in uh, APC, and we are very happy and delighted with the choice the Nigerian people have made. So how will you describe being the deputy governor of a state like Lagos? Well, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of work, um, and uh, we have a governor that understands the geography of the state, understands what needs to be done, and how do you move a, a, a state like this that is actually like a country. You know, the GDP of Lagos is bigger than the GDP of Ghana. And uh, if it were to be a country, it would be the sixth largest economy in Africa. So it's a huge challenge. But then we, are, we, we have a team led by Mr. Governor who is well prepared for this assignment. Because, then let's think about it. No governor or no president wants to fail. But it's all about preparation. Like you said, myself and Governor Somulu are in Ashwaju's team. We are in BRF's team. So we understand what it means to formulate policy that relates to our state. We understand the various processes, the challenges that we have to undertake in order to achieve things. So we understand the policy and the history behind those policies so that you don't remove a wall and then realize we've created a problem. So we understand what it takes to run this state. So I'm very excited and delighted uh, that we, we, we are given this opportunity. Uh, and uh, you know, it's not something that I take very, very lightly. It's not something that I take for granted. I know it comes with a lot of work, but we have the support of these people of the state, and we must keep dialoguing and keep doing well to make sure that uh, we keep pushing this uh, state higher and higher and higher. All right. As Deputy Governor, you have worked with uh, Governor Babajide Sonwulu for close to four years now. How will you describe your relationship and his approach to governance? Well, our relationship is excellent. Uh, we, we talk almost every day, really, almost every day. Um, sometimes late into the night, we discuss issues. Uh, we, we, we work as a team. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's an intelligent man. He's confident of, it, of himself. And therefore, he's willing and capable of sharing information. And that's when we work as a team. We look at issues and we, you know, we give our opinion based on what we've seen. So, you know, I'm extremely delighted about both commissioners. So we've been friends, we know each other, so we understand uh, what makes us tick. So it's, it's been an interesting journey and I'm happy and delighted that we've been able to work very closely to deliver the goods that we promised the people of Lagos. So it's been very nice and we're a very good team. Uh, fantastic. Uh, so the governorship and state assembly elections are uh, two days away. How prepared and confident are you going into these elections after the Labour Party defeated the APC in the presidential election in Lagos? Well, uh, we are very confident. Uh, the people of this state, so governorship elections, House of Assembly elections are local elections in a way. The, the dynamics are a bit different from presidential elections. And uh, we are very confident. We've done a whole lot of good things for the people of Lagos. We are the only subnational anywhere in the world that funded rails on a, on a rail transportation on a balance sheet. It doesn't happen, it has never happened anywhere. Meaning federal government of all the countries will support sub -so sovereign in order to fund infrastructure like rail. So we are the only one that was able to do that. We built the largest rice mill, we've done enormous amount of road, we've done we've done buildings, we've done schools, we've done drainages, we've kept to our promise of the team's agenda. The Goshans are very sophisticated, they are very intelligent people, they know what it means that in order to govern a state like this. They know it's, it's not easy, and therefore it's not a state that can be used as an experimental laboratory. And we are very confident that our message is getting to our people, and our people are, will, be, will be very happy to vote us in again. So it's, like we said, it's democracy, and people will 
exercise that franchise and make a decision. And we're very confident that come, come Saturday, enormous amount of negotiations will vote for us. Very, very confident. Talking to people going across the state in the past two, three weeks, going across all the nooks and corners of Lagos State. What we've heard, what we've listened to, gives us confidence, and I'm very happy and you know, confident that at the end of the day, we will be returned to serve a second term with the government of Babaji Tevili Shorasan Wolu and myself as the Deputy Governor. All right. Uh, Your Excellency, but going by the mood online, I'm sure you know uh, that some youths, a lot of youths in Lagos are not happy with your party. And many have said this has contributed to your party losing Lagos in the presidential election. What message do you have for them? Well, I think that, uh, like Mr. Sanwulu said this morning, uh, he had an interview. And I think one of the issues that people raise, the youth raise, is probably about... Um, the end SARS. And I think he said it very clearly, which I will just repeat. He said, so do a role play and put yourself in my situation. Okay, I'm a father, I have children. He was the only governor that went to the two locations in Ikeja and of course at Lekki. I think the first day was on a Thursday and I went to Ikeja, met a lot of people there and we spoke. And but by the time he came back on Friday, we, we both went to Lekki and then we went to Ekeja. It was the one that took the letter written by the youths, went to the airport, took it to Mr. President, gave it to Mr. President. We were the first state that set up a panel and funded it. They asked for extension two times, the extension, the panel asked for extension two times, and the extension was granted. So the reality is, and then, you know, the interesting thing that people should then understand was that if you recall the issue of Magodo, when the police, you know, sort of barricaded the people of Magodo, and the governor went there. We all know what happened. So if he has the ability to call the police in, will he go there like that? So we must all understand and put things in proper perspective and not listen to things on social media that might not necessarily be true. So let's reason through the process and see what really happened. So, and like he said, NSAR started and it was for about three weeks. It was going on for about three weeks. So it wasn't something that was, and we were dialoguing, we were calling, we were talking to people, you know, until the unfortunate incident happened. So the, the, the issue is what did Lagos State do? And one of the things that we did was to engage and talk to people. And after the scene, after the scene actually happened, call a lot of the youths, talk to them, empower them, make sure that some of the problems that we have, you know, that we can, we can be resolved. Talk to the police, create police relations with families and all those spoke to, you know. So we did a lot of things after the fact to make sure that we have harmony in our, within the limit of what we can actually control. Because as you know, the police is not a state issue. Just like the army is not a sub-sovereign issue. It's a sovereign issue. So within that context, we did everything that we can do. All right. Uh, but some analysts strongly believe that uh, the APC candidates are not campaign live. How will you react to this? Well, I mean, if you look across the country, really, um, you will see that the voter turnout was a bit low, generally, across the country. I think on the average, about 20%, generally. So it's not that we, what, what, why that happened this year, I mean, that's for the political scientists to help us analyze. So, but what we know is that we went, we mobilized people, go and register, get your PVC. So I guess we need to do a better job in getting people out actually to come and vote. And because the, I think one of the things that people think is, oh, maybe it doesn't matter, I'm just one voter, it's only one vote. But actually, they've seen that. A lot of people have seen. I've spoken to a lot of people that said, well, oh, I didn't know it would be like, like this. I would have gone out to vote. So I guess the, the, the reality is that across the country, voter turnout was a bit low this year, given the number that we've seen. But 
we, in the past two weeks, we've been moving around the state to encourage people to come out and vote. Don't be intimidated. Some people complain that the heavy presence of the Nigerian army scared them. They said, no, they are not there to do anything for you. Just go there and vote. You can wait, make sure that vote is counted, and then you go home uh, and, and, go and go and do your business. So uh, I'm sure that this time around, it will be better. All right, uh, let's still talk about some of the lessons from the presidential election. I'm sure you must have been shocked about the outcome of the election in Alimosho, of all places. What happened, and what is the guarantee it won't happen again? Well, I mean, so there are, there are very, so we must understand that various issues. Um, uh, one of the things that we've gotten from our people and from a lot of people is the fact that the Muslim Muslim ticket hot was in Lagos. You know, uh, and that's, that's what we are hearing back. Also, people, a lot of people said, okay, look, our, our son is also on the ballot, and therefore we want to vote, which is one of the reasons that we have a democratic process. People don't even need to have a reason to vote the way anyhow they want to vote. So, and then the third one for us is, Apparently, we also have some issues internally that we didn't resolve right. And so that, those have been corrected now because thankfully we have the ability to look at this issue and correct them. And in the case of the, our local election, Mr. Sonwolu is a Christian. I'm a Muslim, so he's a Christian Muslim ticket. So that's why I said the dynamics are different. Issues are different. A national election is not the same as a local election. So it's, the dynamics are different now. A lot of things will happen differently. But again, we, we have also resolved some of the little lapses that we saw within our parties that we will now be able to correct. All right. I, I know so I'm confident that. All right. Sorry. All right. Uh, Your Excellency, I know earlier you talked about some of your achievements in almost uh, four years. But for the sake of emphasis and reassurance, uh, what more do you have in store uh, for residents of Lagos for another four years, if elected? Well, a whole lot. Uh, if you notice that, one of the things we are doing is to improve the technology architecture of Lagos State. So we are doing, for example, the 3,000 3, kilometers of metro fiber across our state. The essence is to do 6,000. So everywhere that you increase the broadband density across the world. The GDP goes up between 2 and 6%. So being a developing country, we will see where we're falling between that 2 and 6%. Now, imagine if you're able to increase your GDP by 4%, what that means for commerce. And also, we are building two hubs for technology ops. Now, what that means is that we will increase the tele density, we will increase the, band the bandwidth ability, about four or five companies are brought in data center into Lagos. That's a big deal. What that means is that we are storing information around for companies around the world. So because when you build that data center and then you have the pipe to bring in that bandwidth, you are actually storing data. What that does is you are creating high paying jobs for our children and for everybody. And so one of the things we are also doing is to actually start a lot of education on what institutions or establishment needs for employment. So we, we will be creating jobs. We are doing a leather hub, for example, in motion. Again, what that means is not everybody can afford some of this equipment. They are heavy equipment. But being a hub in La Depot in motion, you go there, you use the space, you build your shoes and whatever, and you leave. We don't need to have the money to buy all this equipment. So we are creating industries that allow people to have a sort of central services and shared services for our youths in the technology industry. We are building a film industry. The essence is to improve on the, uh, on the tourism and, of course, the entertainment sector. So in all spheres of life, and of course, you know that we are building enormous amount of infrastructure. The second phase of the blue line it just started. That takes it from Orile all the way to Kokomaiko. 
and then the red line is still there. Imagine if we are able to complete all this infrastructure. It changes the transportation network of our state. Any city where you are able to move people faster, commerce gets better. Imagine moving from a butemeta to Oshodi in nine minutes. So you know what that means in terms of commerce, interaction. So in terms of transportation, we will get better. In terms of road infrastructure, we are building road, the Mende, Ajota bridge is ongoing. I, I was there but last week. It's a massive infrastructure that opens up, you know, when you are coming from Sheraton and you are trying to go, you now go through Okwebi. Instead of turning back again, you are now going straight and you get you can get to Ojota and go to Mende. Awesome. So we are opening up the state, doing new infrastructure, massive ones that if we are able to finish, will actually increase the economic activity of our state. In terms of education, we've also realized that one of the good things for us is that some of the children likes to have comprehensive education. They want to do carpentry. They want to do welding while in school. And therefore, we've started creating comprehensive schools again now. It used to be in 40, 50 years ago, we are creating that. And we've seen that a certain percentage of people are actually going there and the enrollment has gone up. So in education, we want to move up. We have five technical schools. We are trying to expand that where we have technical educations so that people can actually do the right things in terms of their skills, so use their hands so that they can, they can actually do well and be certified. So that it's well known that if, if you go there and you're a plumber, you are a good plumber that has certification and you can do the job. So in terms of education, we are doing that. In terms of road, we are building massive infrastructures across the state. And in terms of entertainment, I just said we're doing a building film industry. We, we've been training enormous amount of people in various things, photography, drama, writing, script writing, and so many skills. That allow people to sharpen their skills. So we are pushing a lot of envelopes around the state, and we are hoping that we'll be able to do a lot more to improve on the GDP of our state, improve on the economic activity of our state, improve the social condition of our citizens, and be able to do well for our people. So there are a whole lot of things. Yes, pediatric hospital in the whole of West Africa, because it, it, as you know, everybody knows Mercy Hospital has been there for years, but we just need to expand it. We need to make it bigger and better. We are training enormous amount of people, doctors. We, we are one state that has automatic replacement for our doctors and for our teachers. So when a doctor retires or resigns, for whatever reason, automatic approval is already given. They don't need to go to the governor again. The Health Service Commission must employ these new doctors immediately. The same thing for teachers, so that we can keep building the architecture of our state in terms of education and improving the health welfare of our people. So, and then of course, in terms of welfare of our people, so we have a ministry that is called wealth creation. We have a ministry that is called poverty alleviation. They are doing an enormous amount of people, especially for our women. And then we have Lagos State Employment Trust Fund that is granting grants for people in order to do their businesses, the MSCs and the SMSs. So what that means is they are able to raise funds in order to start a business of 10, 15 million, 30 million, and so on and so forth, in agriculture, in commerce, in fashion, and the rest and the rest. And then not only that, you also train people, because the biggest challenge of SMEs is how do you survive after two, three years? So that's what we've seen in our study. And therefore, they also mentor people. So they attach new end entrants with a mentor. And then they'll actually also do how do you do do your bookkeeping, how, how do you do, keep your accounts, and so on and so forth. So it's not just giving people resources to start a business, but giving them, uh, teaching them how to sustain that business over two, three, four, five years, employing people and the rest. So there are a whole gamut of things, a bouquet of activities that we have in plan in, for, for the people of Lagos State in, in all the teams, our team's agenda, and uh, you know, in terms of environment, we are doing many drainages, and I've listened to some commentator that says, or a candidate of a party that was saying, we have only six drainage. That's not, that's not correct. 
we have six systems. We call them system, but the system can have 47 drainages because they are big. That's why we refer them as crucial. So, from, for example, from Agege all the way to Oduashimau, that's about 19 kilometers, 20 kilometers. And you have enormous amount of drainages within that from Oba all the way to Akme Road. At Akme Road, it's a three meter depth, three meter depth of drainage that moves water all the way from Agege to Oduashimau. That's a system one. So, it's not one drainage. But that's the six systems that cover the whole state. And we're improving it, connecting different other drainages to each of those systems to expand the volume and make sure that we drain our state effectively. So in terms of all aspects of team's agenda that we've seen as a way to actually improve the economic activity of our state, we are, we are pushing it. And then there are a whole lot of things other to actually also expand. All right, uh, Your Excellency, uh, since we could not uh, join you earlier, we have to extend the show beyond uh, 9 p.m. All right, so let's get back to talking about some of the lessons from the presidential election. How much impacts the, the pain and anguish in the land arising from the Nara redesign and crippling fuel scarcity have on turnout and pattern of voting? Do you think the opposition benefited from this? Well, I think it's, 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 it's reasonable to think so. Uh, like I said, I think our, our political scientists or analysts will tell us over time. But I think it's reasonable to think that a lot of people will blame our government of APC for actually coming up without those policies. And some people, of course, they have difficulty. People couldn't, couldn't withdraw money. Their money is actually in the bank and they couldn't get it out. So it's possible to say that a lot of people did not come out to vote because of that. It's possible. But like I said, I think analysts, people that actually look at these things will tell us. But, you know, given these situations, given some of the you know, lack of fuel for months, currency redesign and the various hardship that comes with it, for a candidate to still win, it tells you that you know, Nigerians actually listened to his message and what they were able to put aside all those challenges. Because it, the truth is that it was difficult. And therefore, for a candidate to ultimately win, means that if those policies were not in place, it's possible that the, 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 the margin would be wider for a candidate. So we, we are thankful, and then we are, we are sure that by this, um, March 11, that the, the margin for us in APC in Lagos would be very, very wide. All right. Uh, but to put this in proper perspective, was this a Naira redesign necessary in the first place? <laughs> well, so, I mean, the, the central bank gave us some reasons, um, some of them not economic. They said, first of all, that they want to discourage kidnapping and all this ransom thing. So that's not economic. So, well, uh, I, I think that that's reasonable. In truth, right. it can actually limit all those people destroying other people's lives. So that, that makes sense. But they also said that it will reduce counterfeiting. So if the new Naira is more secure in terms of counterfeit, but they also said that we have too much money in circulation or that is outside of the bank. That's an area where I have a disagreement. Uh, you know, the total value of the total money that is in our system in Nigeria is about 51 trillion, 52 trillion naira. And according to CBN, we have only about 3 trillion out there. So if you look at that, that's less than 10%. For a, a country of a population of 200 million, for a country of this size, if you look at other countries that are actually cashless, like Japan, the United States, you know, Japan is very high. It's about 20% of money in circulation compared to total money. And in the United States, they said it's about 12%. So, you know, uh, uh, that's an area where, for me, it's a bit tough. And that's probably why we saw the hardship that we saw. Because there are a lot of people in this country that don't even bank, use the bank. In, in some states, in some states based on some scene. Only 18% of women in some states have bank accounts. So what happens to those 82% that don't have bank accounts? So I think we need to look at all these factors 
before we make this decision. And like somebody just said, Mr. Peter, Peter uh, 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 Peters, I just said, it's not currency redesign, but currency confiscation. So, you know, we, but, uh, but I think with the, even if the intent is good, we must all agree that the implementation was not very great, and a lot of people went through a lot of hardship. So I think that's the lesson that I think CBN should take on board and try to improve on it so that at least Nigerians can be happy and be able to spend their resources the way they like. All right, away from that, I know Lagos remains the only state that introduced palliatives to cushion the effect of fuel and um, naira scarcity on residents. What informed this decision? Well, I mean, for us, it's always very important to, to make sure that our citizens don't suffer any hardship. Uh, some of these things are beyond us. So, for example, we did it during COVID. COVID was a worldwide event, and we just realized that a lot of people who actually make money on a daily basis were not able to make any money. And therefore, what can we do to cushion the effect of that hardship. So the same thing, the moment we saw that a lot of people will be going through this hardship, we decided that what can we do? So we said a lot of people take public transportation within our sphere and we have the carry cards that allowed us to know that why don't we do a reduction of that 50% so that at least we are able to monitor it. We know how many people come in, how many people goes out because they tap in and they tap out. So we are able to reconcile that at the end of the day, and therefore we can pay the balance for the operators. So, and then we thought it's, it's also important for people to have some food, and therefore we are lucky that we have the, our rice meal, and therefore we started doing sending rice, and then we work with other companies to produce all this food combo that has all sorts of sebovita, spaghetti, and so on and so forth within a box, and then distribute to people that are you know, less privileged, and so that at least we can cushion the effect of people not being able to have access to their money from their banks. And uh, we thought it's something that is important for us so that the people in the society that don't have the ability can actually live their lives without too much stress. So that was what informed it, and uh, I hope that a lot of people benefited from it and that, uh, you know, it cushioned some of the effect of this hardship. Great. Uh, Your Excellency, let's talk about uh, the Blue Line Rain. Uh, since this project was inaugurated by the President in January, much has not been seen about it. Uh, tell us the situation of things. So, a lot is going on. Uh, so, the students have been taking, different stakeholders, because are taking the train on a daily basis based on invitation. So, they, I'm sure they've taken some students, They've taken some market women. They've taken the essence is to educate people. How do you enter? How do you use your because you must have a card. You must have a carry card. You swipe it. The turnstile open. You enter. How do you move? Uh, the the trains are this size. How do you move between? So it, it's it's a process. And then of course all over the world you must train. You must test your train for a certain period of time. If you notice. When Dubai was to open, they, are, they tested for six months without passengers. So just going and coming back, testing, within, making sure there is no kink, and so on and so forth. So we are testing it and also educating our citizens about the process of usage. How do you use it? So that on the first day of commercial operation, there will be no confusion. There will be no hardship for people to actually take it. So we are taking different stakeholders, different segments of the society, and they are going on rides. I went. I was in Ajegunle uh, on Friday, la, on last Friday, and some of the people, youths that were there, said they are just coming back from their own train ride. That they were uh, invited to come and do, and that they gave them uh, the, the 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 carry card. They showed them how to top it up. They showed them how to swipe it. They were able to swipe, and then they w went in. So the learning process needs to be out there for people, and that process is going on. And at the same time, the, the testing is going on, and how do people get out of the station? Because we, like we said, this is an electric rail, and therefore there is the toll, what is called the toll rail, and it's electricity. So how to protect people, make sure they don't touch the rail itself, you know? 
people, we've seen people selling on rail lines and so on. This is not a rail line that you can sell on. So those are the type of education that's going on, so that at least everybody understands uh, the benefit that comes with it and what should be done and what not should be done. All right. Uh, it's also very important for me to let you know, Your Excellency, that uh, many Lagosians are not happy with the excesses of LASMA. And it is believed that they contribute uh, to the anger against the APC. What you know, I, I, I just came back actually like a few minutes before this interview from interaction with some of the stakeholders on the road. And that, uh, that same accusation came up. The good thing was that we have the, the, the end of LASMA was there, and some LASMA officials, and they could hear it for themselves. Uh, you know, over time, there has been many disciplinary action taken against some staff. So we just need to, again, let them understand their role. The role of LASMA in Lagos is very important. But excesses are not acceptable. There are things that they should not do if people are caught, then the right disciplinary action will be taken. So one of the things that we are doing is to look at the rules of engagement again, sit down with LASMA officials, let them understand it, let them hear these complaints, and let them fish out the bad eggs among themselves. Do your job, help us control traffic, help us move traffic, because in a city like Lagos, there's a lot of traffic, but let us move it. Let us help us and not necessarily constitute yourself into a nuisance, harassing people on the road. So that's not acceptable, that's not their mandate, and therefore we've heard people loud and clear, and they will see changes very, very soon. If people uh, can, one of the things that we've also said is we will, talking with the general manager, they will open a lot of lines for people to actually complain, and then, but people will see that very soon. But basically, there is a lot of internal training going on within last month now to say, understand your role to serve people and not necessarily to exploit people. If you are caught, these are the consequences. And a lot of people face this differently. A lot of people are dismissed, a lot of people, but we just need to make sure that we do more to let all last month officials understand their role and be able to do what is right for the people, not necessarily harassing them on the road. Uh, fantastic. It is also great to see that uh, your leader, Ashwa Jubola Tinubu, is now the president-elect. Tell us about the sort of president he will be. Well, I mean, from my experience, uh, he's a man, uh, he's a luminary leader, meaning he is very visionary. And when you are visionary, you are able to project into the future and say, what do we need? And one other thing is he has the ability to pick talents, the right talents, and I'm sure that he will fill his cabinet with the best brains in this land, irrespective of where they come from, irrespective of their gender, and irrespective of uh, their class. So that's one thing that I think he will do. And he, he, when he, you, you have an assignment as a member of his government, and there are challenges, is one person that will do everything to support you. So he doesn't just give assignment and just leave you to on your own. He's able to support. And that's what you need in a president, to be able to make sure that you have the vision. This is where we are going. Map out how do we get there and get the right people that can take us there. And if they have challenges, we are able to support them. So if you think about that in all spheres, in economy, you are spoken about various things. That one of the things that is contributing to poverty in our land is lack of access to credit. If people have access to credit, not this 22% rate, we need to do something about that. And I'm sure those are the things that we, we, we work on. People in their hand. You know, we, are, we, we, are, we, we, we buy houses like we buy jam and rice. That, that doesn't make sense. So people must be able to have mortgages so that they can pay over time, 10 years, 15 years, depending on what is suitable for them. So that everybody within certain clan, uh, within uh, workers, uh, workers, mechanics, and everybody can buy different types and different scales of houses and be able to fund it given access to credit. We are spoken about uh, agricultural commodity markets. So we, we produce all these agricultural products 
and we don't determine the prices in Africa. He's saying that that doesn't make any sense. So that we should be able, as a people, to produce and determine our, so our prices. So we produce cocoa, for example, and that's why the production of cocoa will go down. Because the farmers that are producing it don't get the right prices. So we need to bring the commodity markets back. He has, he has, he has spoken about that. He has spoken about education. That we more, if it is a four year time, let us, let us spend four years for our students. And as such, interaction with lecturers, what do we need to do? There will always be problems, but we must sit down and talk about it and discuss the way forward. So I'm sure we will we, be engaging the unions, uh, ASU, we'll be engaging students so that we can solve this problem. There are problems that ASU needs to solve, there are problems that government needs to solve. So one of the things that I see that will get better is engagement with all stakeholders to make sure that we fix issues, discuss it before it becomes a problem. So it's, like I said, it's a visionary leader and it's somebody that believes in taking actions at the appropriate time. So I'm, I'm excited. I, I pray uh, that God will give him everything that he needs, good health, sound mind, and good people so that he can work and deliver the goods for Nigeria. But I'm excited because I have worked with him at close quarter, and I know he's an intelligent man. He understands finance. Part of the biggest challenge for Nigeria is actually our revenue. We don't have enough revenue for the size of our country. And therefore, it's one of the areas that I'm, th I'm sure is very, very good heart. And if we're able to even resolve that, make sure that we are able to increase the basket. Therefore, a lot of other things can actually come in. Finding a better way to fund our road infrastructure or rail infrastructure, for example, not just using our balance sheet and a loan. And that's why it's taking long to finish roads and the rest. So if we're able to find all these financing options to do various projects, our country, we, 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 our GDP, our economy will get better. People will be more engaged. And as such, Nigeria, all this agitation will come down. And then we can build a country that we will all be proud of. And I'm sure that Ashwaju Bola met you know, will be able to work with his team to make sure that they deliver on their promises for this country. So it's, it's an exciting time. All right. Uh, Your Excellency, with the governorship and state assembly elections uh, just two days away, what's your message to Nigerians? Well, I mean, the Goshans, my message to you is uh, we have an APC in Lagos State, a government that understands what it takes to run a state of our size with different challenges. As you all know, we occupy very small size in terms of land in our country, 0.4% of the land mass of Nigeria, but we are catching for about 11% of the Nigerian population. So we are, we are a massive state. We have the biggest population for the smallest land size. So that means our density is huge, but it comes with challenges and then it comes with advantages. So you need a team that understand all the intricacies of managing such such size of economy. And Babajide Olushara Sonwulu has been our governor for four years, have been our deputy for governor for four years, and we've been able to, to move the state forward in, in different aspects of the economy. We've been able to improve on our ac academic performances. The last WAEC shows that people, our children, with passes in English and math and five credits, went up dramatically to almost 84%. That's encouraging. But we can move it forward. We were rebuilding schools, we are rebuilding, we are training teachers, and we are increasing the ability to teach by giving everybody a, a tablet that allows us to do on a lab, on my laptop, I can see all the attendance of all our children in all primary schools and secondary schools in Lagos State. So we are doing all this, we are doing the metropolitan fiber that I spoke about before. We are building new hospitals. So we have a team that understands that the, our future is very important. And therefore, we cannot gamble. Lagos State is too important with people that don't have this understanding. They don't have this understanding. And people try to expand the negative about our state and totally don't talk about the positives. And therefore, they think that 
Lagosians are not intelligent. But Lagosians are intelligent. They know what is good. And my appeal to Lagosians is to go out there on Saturday and vote for our party APC because we understand what is needed to keep moving Lagos State. In people say, oh, what improvement has been done? In 1999, Lagos State has about 9,429 roads. Only about 7% were tired when Ashwag Bola met Timumbu came in. Today, we've done about 49 or 51%. I said two months ago that I checked. So we are making progress. At that time in 99, we don't have a single public ambulance. A single public ambulance. Today, we have about 67, given the number, 167, I'm sorry. And then, we, at the time, we all know uh, 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 the size of garbage is on our road. We all know then how people die on the streets. You see dead body all over. All this has been, has been taken away. We are now building, so we've removed all this hardship. We are now building the necessary infrastructure, uh, building our city. People are coming in, in tons. So we are a victim of our success. People are coming in from other states. So we are lucky now. We, have, we are lucky. We have a new president also that will build on Muhammadu Buhari's achievement and expand our economy, keeping people to stay in their various states so that at least we can continue to manage the architecture and the infrastructure of our state. So my appeal is for Lagosians to look at the achievement of this government and, and vote for us again so that we can keep expanding the architecture of our state. We can keep expanding the economic activity of our state, and we can keep expanding the academic credentials of our state so that we are, we can, our children can compete favorably anywhere in the world where they go. And therefore, I'm appealing that Lagosians should look at all these statistics and all these indices and, and vote for APC come March 11, 2023. All right. Uh, the show tonight I have been discussing the Lagos State uh, Governorship Election Batu with the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Dr. Obafemi Hamzat. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for coming on the program. It's indeed a pleasure having you on the program tonight. And we look forward to more conversation with you. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for having me. Thank you. I thank you very much for watching. That marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But the conversation continues from here. Get in touch with us on Twitter at TVC News NG and at Olajumoke00 using the hashtag Politics Tonight. We are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. Join us for the repeat episode at midnight and tomorrow for another edition of Politics Tonight. Dig and beyond the headlines. I am Olajumoke Olatuji. Goodbye. All in favor say aye. Those against me, the eyes are weak. What do you know about the legislature, its role in governance, and as one of the three arms of government? Lagos Parliament is here to bring it to you as it is. Here to bring you every detail you need to know about the legislature in Africa's most popular city. On Lagos Parliament, you get a chance to meet the lawmaker of the week. Events are critically reviewed. You can also observe plenary in Yoruba language. I am Abimbola Agebi. Join me every Friday at 9 p.m. as I take you through the activities of the legislature. Every major news story is with Benny Perspective and layered with different levels of impact. Hello. What time? I am here live at the...